Well, welcome back everybody to the big board. We're taking a look at Blenheim. Uh, it's uh, 14, 1704. It's a new game called the, uh, and a new system called the Seven Hex System. This is volume one. It's a one battle volume. Uh, it's published by Legion Games. And I thought I would try and give you a quick overview of my <clears throat> first little moves and bits and pieces to just give you a little flavor of, of what's going on here and see whether this you know this may be of interest to you i think i understand what i'm doing but i'm not 100 percent certain because we haven't really got very far yet but uh we've gone through some movement we've gone through some uh combat and i thought i would explain both of those things to you and how the order system works and then that might uh, be a, a nice little introductory video and then We'll do some gameplay video as we as we move along, or I'll write an AAR or something. We'll work it out. So, uh, sequence of play. Well, I guess uh, first of all, you may notice uh, there's these what, what we would call in the old days mega hexes, right? So, seven hex cluster, and uh, they're each individually numbered. And so, uh, forces up to six stacking points uh, can or strength points can. Um, be in each hex and so your movement is either within the mega hex or from mega hex to mega hex or area to area as they like to call it here but i, I like the word mega hex better uh, so uh, with the sequence of play you conduct strategic movement then you roll for orders and then you will do tactical movement which may just be movement or it may be movement to combat and then after that, you whenever you do move into another mega hex uh, of, of someone else's or attempt to do that, you will have to resolve combat and go for go for it from there. So uh, let's have a look at strategic movement first. So the first thing that you notice that there are some units here that have uh, two two units stacked, and they're in the center hex. And you've got some here. You've got some here. They are prepared and ready to maneuver, basically. They're ready to go off marching or attacking, as the case may be. And if I wanted to conduct uh, strategic movement, I have to be adjacent to my leader or in my leader's mega hex. And so I could grab these guys, and depending on who they are, whether they're cavalry or infantry, I would be able to move them from one mega hex to the other by... Uh, by moving from one center hex to the next center hex. Now, uh, depending on the type of strategic movement you're doing, you might be using all roads, or you might be doing, uh, there's two other modes of movement as well in, uh, in this. I'm just trying to look them up here right now so I don't uh, butcher the facts, right? Uh, yeah, moving solely along roads, moving without the benefit of road movement, and then a, what's called a redeployment. Uh, so there's uh, there's a couple of different uh, rules for each of those concepts, but basically you get the idea. And obviously you cannot move with strategic movement <clears throat> in any way, shape, or form into the enemy's mega hex. But if you do move into range of uh, the artillery, artillery can make ranged fire against you, and uh, it is uh, quite deadly, in fact. So we'll we'll have a look at that at some later point in another video. <coughs> but the artillery has uh, the ability to kind of reach out and touch somebody uh, in that in that kind of uh, vein. Uh, each of these hexes, each of the individual hexes, I believe is four hundred meters. Do I want to say that right? Is that right? It's right here at the front somewhere. Let's see. Oh, he said, why wow, now I can't find it. I was right here before I was looking at it. We'll get into unit representation and other stuff later, but basically each infantry unit is going to be about three battalions uh, or uh, a dozen or more squadrons of uh, cavalry and uh, eight to 16 guns, depending on the size. And I still cannot see the dang hex size here. I know it's here somewhere. I think it might be on the back of the box. I think I'm pretty sure it's 400 meters uh, on 
you know what, I'm thinking of another game. I'm thinking of Gallipoli. That's 400 meters. So let's see. 500 meters per hex. There you go. And 20 minutes per turn. All right. Sorry for the diversion there. Strategic movement. Talked about that. Range fire. It happens. And it seems to be quite deadly. It's quite easy to disorder a unit. So a tactical movement. Well, how do you get to move tactically? Well, first thing you have to do is roll two dice. And you roll two dice. And the white die is going to uh, be uh, your representation of your order ability. And you're going to add the order value of the faction that you're fighting for, which in this case for Marlborough is three. So that would end up being a four. And as long as that number is greater than this number, then you get to execute your movement. At any point in time, this number is larger than this number, your turn, your entire turn, is over. We're done. Each time you choose to execute another order, you will add one. Well, basically, you're subtracting one from the order value. So you started out with three order value. Next turn, you'll have two order value to be added to this die roll, uh, and so on and so on. And you can actually have negative numbers. So that can be pretty painful little exercise. And I can see turns ending very quickly. And in fact, when I was doing this, I got to move one uh, stack and then I rolled a uh, uh, high red number. And that was uh, allegedly the end of the turn. But given that I didn't want the turn to end just yet, because I did want to work out how combat worked, we, uh, we mutually agreed with my, my solo self that we would continue playing and we would con conduct this combat down here. And so we did. And combat is a simple uh, factor counting exercise where we tally up these factors. So I, I have to be in, in the center of this hex, uh, in center of this mega hex, to execute an attack. And I'm attacking units that are not formed up to go and uh, conduct operations or whatever the case may be. They are uh, basically in some sort of defensive posture, right? Uh, they're spread out against the edge of the mega hex. So... Uh, I, I've got these fellas here. We're going to tally up all their points and we're going to tally up all their points and we're going to see what the difference is. And right now it's zero, but we're going to roll a die for each each uh, unit. And in this case, since I've already done the combat, excuse me, I rolled a six and what oh goodness, a four. Now there are some modifiers that go to that. It's because right now we're looking at a plus two modifier. But there's a uh, nifty little chart online that uh, Cisco has developed, which is very handy. And it has a list of all the modifiers there. And you can just net them all out and add them all up. And what we ended up with was a net difference between the two of plus five for the uh, allies, which means that they were victorious in their attempt to attack this hex or this mega hex. So, uh, because that was because for, the net total was 14 versus 9 and the delta was 5. Now, to work out what the losses are, here's where we have to do a little bit of math. Uh, the losses are were 5 uh, was the delta. We divide that by 2 and we round down. So we are now going to take 2 losses. And uh, then I'm going to... Uh, look at the... Oh, no, I've already forgotten how I did it. Yeah, so uh, I divided in half again. Uh, no clear reason why. Uh, but it just says you take the number of hits and divide, that, that they're going to take and divide it by two. And I'm going to take one hit. And then I'm going to roll a d6 and uh, see what that number is. And in this case, I rolled a 2. And that is going to be... And we'll talk about that in a second. So these guys are going to lose a step. And so they're going to flip over. And what's going to happen here is that I rolled this uh, die and I rolled a 2. My losses, the allied player's losses, are uh, depending on what I roll will either, if I roll a one or a two, I will subtract a hit from this number all the way through to, if I roll a six, I might add 
a hit to this number, and that would be how many hits they take. Well, because I'm going to subtract one from one, it's going to be zero, so they're not going to have any effect. And they're not going to have any losses for this particular attack. Now, because the difference in the combat uh, value was five or greater than four, these guys are actually going to have to retreat two mega hexes. One, two. So we're just going to pop them out of frame, and these chaps will get to advance into the hex, into the mega hex, and I believe they go into the middle of the mega hex. And that, my friends, is how combat works, according to me, and my very, very first attempt at working through the rules on this and understanding it. Uh, some of the modifiers are the, the unit types that are attacking, whether they're platoon or battalion firers that are, that are attacking, uh, whether there are any uh, artillery involved in the attack or the defense, whether we're attacking into a town or into or out of a uh, higher or lower ground or across a river as the case may be. So it's all very standard stuff. But there are a lot of uh, take a number and divide it by two and then take a number and divide it by two and take a number and divide it by two little uh, processes you've got to go through here to get to a number. And it um, have a little bit of a challenge with that as to why that is the way it is. But suffice to say, there's a combat. And after combat, we would then move on to, in terms of sequence of play, we would continue on and I would then roll to see if I got to move anything else. And here I probably would, I would get to move another unit. So as you can probably see, there's not gonna be a lot of activity happening in a turn and that probably explains why although it's only a 15 turn game i'm not sure how much is actually going to get done in this battle uh then we would look at morale and we would look at uh, command unit movement from there so we get to move the leaders around and stuff like that so that's that's a quick high level first pass first movements first combats that i've executed and we may have well made some mistakes there but i wanted to share that with you real quick and give you a look at it. Beautiful presentation, beautiful counters, great uh, artwork on the map. Uh, Grunz did a great job on this uh, uh, map. Uh, and Randy uh, was also involved in that, I believe. So I think this new system has got some interesting aspects to it. I don't, let's see how it all plays out and how the tactics evolve and all the rest of it. I am not an expert. Uh, by any uh, means in this era, in this particular era, this early musketry and uh, cannonade style uh, combat. Uh, so it's all pre-Napoleonic stuff. So I think Steve Pohl has uh, got himself an interesting little system here and we'll see how it all pans out. Uh, look forward to talking to all of you soon. Cheers.